Tina Clifton, and I'd like to welcome you to the second episode of Cruiser TV. Part one of two on sailing to Cuba. In this episode, I'm on the prowl at the Hemingway Marina for some great cruiser stories and information on checking into Cuba. This episode is sponsored by Mantis Anchors, the most reliable anchor ever made. We know there must be more to this. We said that love could conquer anything. Well, now's the chance to give these words the meaning. Here's the chance to give these words some meaning. In March of this year, a historic moment in time took place as U.S. President Obama visited Cuba, the first American president to visit Cuba in nearly 90 years. Changes have begun, more changes are on their way, and very soon, American travel to Cuba will open up for all. Hemingway Marina is the largest marina in Cuba with an official capacity of up to 400 vessels. Marine services include fuel, fresh water, shore power, phones, internet access, 24-hour security, and more. Cruisers may find the entrance to the marina challenging in bad weather and at night and should be attempted in relatively calm conditions. Customs, Immigration and Health Services located on site, along with car rental, charters and yacht club. In this episode, part one of Sailing to Cuba, we will chat with the Dockmaster, find out everything there is to know about checking in with Vicky, get a personal view on Cuba from Pat and Addison on Three Penny Opera, and hear from the boy's unfortunate son about pulling in after midnight, their sailing adventure, fishing, and more. Also, stay tuned for a brief look at the Marina in Cienfuegos and hear from Monique in Cayo Largo. And meet this month's featured vlogger, Accidental Sailor Girl. And now, Fortunate Son. Speaking with Captain John Dunlevy and his crew aboard John's sailing vessel, the Fortunate Sun, a beautiful 41-foot tartan. The sailing team arrived late last night, making their way from Marco Island in Florida. I started the adventure back in November. I bought the boat in October, needed some work, got it done in November out in, in Rhode Island. Frost on the ground, really cold. But then we pushed off. People thought we were crazy. We were, but we ended up coming down, uh, took my time, went down the east coast, mostly outside, so a little bit on the intercoastal. And then we, uh, over the last, since November, kind of bouncing around. We did the Miami to Havana race, which was a lot of fun. And then we made the turn and uh, came around the Gulf and uh, came back down to Cuba. And it was a little tricky to get in through the passage because it's, you're, we're looking for one particular buoy and there's a lot of background lights that it gets a little intense until you see it. The biggest challenge of the race, uh, both the race and our cruise down, was finding the entrance to uh, Hemingway Marina. There's a sea buoy about a quarter mile offshore uh, that gets kind of hidden by uh, the city lights and you need to uh, be pretty precise on your navigation in order to find the sea buoy. Once you find the sea buoy, you just line up uh, 140 degrees and right down the channel following uh, the uh, uh, stake markers, which are lit. You 
know, red and uh, green and just follow it right in. It's uh, pretty simple once you find the sea buoy, but if uh, you miss the, uh, the stake markers out there, uh, it's uh, two foot uh, deep reefs either side, so you really need to be precise on that. And both times we came in, uh, we were navigating using GPS and um, just all of a sudden, oh, oh, there's the buoy right here, you know, we're 10 feet away. So GPS has been uh, very, very good to us. <laughs> and how was your sail in from Florida? We had a great sail. We sailed the whole way. We had, it was pretty much a beam, a broad reach most of the way. We were probably averaging seven knots. It was just a blast. One of the highlights is we did a little fishing. We put the lures in three times, got three hits, managed to bring one fish in, barracuda. Okay. And the, the, the fishermen are over there. You can talk to them next. So uh, we bought a Rapala lure, Marco Island. Um, I had fished in the Gulf before uh, numerous times. And um, so anyways, we, uh, we got the right setup. Uh, Johnny uh, fortunately purchased a nice pole, some uh, good test. Uh, we attached some steel leader and uh, we cast it out. It uh, was about a 30-foot runner and um, just left it out there. We hadn't had a, a hit on it probably for about a half hour or so, but uh, we heard that drag unwind and uh, everybody just about in boats calling fish on. Uh, ironically, you know, people are doing different things at different times and uh, there were only a couple guys available to uh, tend, to the, tend to the rod at the time, which was Jerry. And uh, with the drag unwinding so quickly, we got uh, the line wrapped around in the reel. So uh, Jerry took matters into his own hands. He, uh, he had his leather gloves on and he, uh, he pulled uh, in a four foot barracuda by hand. And it was after probably letting out about, uh, I'd say 100 to 150 feet of line. So kudos to this guy right here. But yet uh, it took a team effort because a lot my good friend Eddie, who ran, manned the gaff, the fish would not have made it onto the boat. It, that's it right. really was a team effort between yeah. all of us to land that fish. I had to administer a little pain to that uh, barracuda. I had to gaff him and then uh, apply the mallet to uh, knock him out. And then uh, I had uh, the enviable task of uh, filleting him up. And that was the next part of the team effort. Ken Johnson over here made some, uh, was it ceviche? Pe people tend to not like uh, to eat barracuda because most of them are caught around uh, the reefs. Right. And uh, inshore, and um, in the Caribbean, there's uh, oh, a, a virus uh, called Chikura or something like that that uh, can make you sick. But this one, we caught you know out in the Gulf Stream, uh, 20 miles out from uh, the Dry Tortugas, so there was no uh, question about that. You know, and uh, uh, ceviche. Oh, ceviche is pretty much any kind of seafood. You cut it up. Uh, into small bite-sized pieces, uh, marinate it in lime juice, lemon juice. I like to uh, add onions, cilantro, and a uh, little salt, little pepper, and tomato. And you just let it sit in the bowl, or uh, we had a jug that we uh, put it in and in the refrigerator and uh, marinated it for about five hours. And the uh, the acidic uh, juices uh, denature the proteins just like cooking does so you cook it in juice hi my name is Eric Corbett uh, crew member on Fortunate Son aka aka skinny aka flaco now that I'm here in <laughs> Spanish speaking country sailing story that I want to tell would probably be um, just getting a uh, acclimated to my good buddy's new boat here that was a new um, uh, new member to the team as of last fall so um, sailing down on the ocean first time for me doing that so um, she sailed beautiful um, great group of guys I uh, go out with uh, beautiful day um, and just an awesome awesome adventure probably the thing I enjoy the most about sailing is the moment when you shut the motor off and mother nature fills the sails and you hear nothing but wind and water, this pure beauty, pure power, Mother Nature at her finest and interacting with her in a way that is rhythmic and beautiful. It is so relaxing to let the world go by. And now I'm going to make my way back up to Chicago. Oh hey, 
I didn't see you there. Up next, we have Vicky on Morel. She's going to tell us everything we need to know about checking in and sailing to Cuba. I'm Vicki O'Connor, my husband Jim, Captain Jim, and right now we have a good friend with us. And uh, we are here in Cuba. Uh, we sailed up from Grand Cayman. But we are a United States flagged boat. We have sailed the Caribbean from Maine all the way down and we're doing a big loop. We're going back to the United States. We're clearing into Key West tomorrow morning. The boat will have not been in the United States for four years, so she's going back home, you could say. Uh, Americans in Cuba, you know, it's opening up for us now. At the moment, we can't just go. There are still paperwork and permissions. Uh, some people are getting actual licenses, which you apply to uh, OFAC and BIS for. Or you can fall under one of 12 categories and you can self-certify. And then you really still need to do your paperwork with the Coast Guard so when you re-enter you don't get in any trouble. Uh, so we went through that entire process. It was very painless. We were able to self-certify under one of the 12. Our license from the United States came within three weeks. And we were actually able to, at the last moment, they accommodated us and we added a, a crew member, a friend that came along. So they're being very open. Um, things here in Cuba with regards to the Americans and with regards to Cuba itself are changing literally daily. There's no way to have absolute um, information and you'll show up and it'll, it'll be changed already, it'll be different. There's a lot of things changing daily, whether it's internet, whether it's the exchange rate on the money, the ability to use a credit card, that's all, you know, it's changing daily, daily so you just have to keep your eye on it and you have to use, you know, resources like Cruiser TV and Sailing and Cruising Cuba where we're all communicating to try to get the latest and the greatest information out. Customs and Immigration, uh, when you pull up, you'll fill out your paperwork and they do have um, an agricultural person come on board. We did have our temperature taken. They are actually concerned about Zika right now, so I think they were looking for fever, uh, any kind of you know disease we might have and have a fever. So they did take our, our temperature, ask us how we felt, and we told them we were fine. Uh, the whole process took approximately 15 minutes. Every American uh, or everyone who doesn't have medical insurance at, that covers Cuba uh, has to buy Cuban medical insurance for $25 a week. Uh, it's charged at the end of your stay, and that's in case something happens to you while you're here. Stay tuned for part two of Sailing to Cuba for more information from Vicky. And now a word from our sponsor. Introducing the Mentas Anchor, the most reliable anchor ever made. Other anchors often can't set in firm, aggressive bottoms that's endangering your safety. The Mentos Anchor will not fail you. It will set the first time, every time, even in the most demanding situations. Hi, I'm Monique and this island is Cayo Lago. It's on the south coast of Cuba and as you can see there's a lot of white sand and blue water. It's kind of touristy here, which is usually a bit of a bummer when you're cruising on a sailboat, but it's definitely a good thing here because most of the other islands nearby are uninhabited, which is great if you want to go snorkeling and relax on the beach, but not great when you run out of food and you need more rum. There's lots of hotels here, which is awesome because we can get Wi-Fi. And there's even a marina with a bar and a little shop where you can buy soda and sometimes veggies. There's water on the dock, but it's not good enough to drink. So we're all crossing our fingers for some rain or we're not going to be drinking anything. <laughs> there aren't many ports of entry into Cuba and this is one of the only places you can check into on the southern coast. Everybody's been really nice and we're loving it. It's a great spot for kiteboarding and Gar's been giving our friends lessons on the beach in between taking off on the water. So we're having a lot of fun here in Cuba. Yay, Cuba! <laughs> for those interested in heading to the southern coast of Cuba, you can head to Marlin Marina Cienfuegos in the garden suburb of Punta Gorda. The marina has solid concrete berths and an anchorage with good holding. Services include customs, immigration, water, shore power, fuel, and more. The channel to the marina is well marked and dinghies can be left beside the main marina office. Associated with the marina is the magnificent Cienfuegos Yacht Club with restaurants, pool, and other activities for the family. Internet can be accessed at the nearby Hagua Hotel. 
for marina rates, visit our website at cruisertv.com. And now, back to the Hemingway Marina in Santa Fe, Havana. My name's Addison. And I'm Pat. And we're on uh, the Three Penny Opera, Catalina 42. Uh, we're both from Canada. I'm from uh, Quebec originally, but we uh, have lived in uh, Toronto for 25 years before we decided to leave. <laughs> yeah. um, we left Canada uh, in 2008. Uh, took the boat and headed south. You have some knowledge of Cuba. You've written an article before on Cuba, and you could maybe give us some information on that. Well, you know, there's a lot of information out there about Cuba. A lot of it is wrong because a lot of the a lot of the, the joke I have is there's a lot of cruising guides that are written about Cuba and a few of the authors have actually been there and so there's a lot of information that's out on the internet that is just plain wrong. You know, the uh, about sh the people talk about shortages, they talk about preparing for a voyage to Mars when they come to Cuba, and it's just not so. I mean, there's 13 million Cubans. The, uh, they live differently than we do in other parts of the world. They have less of the material things than we do in other parts of the world, but you know, they're, uh, they're happy, they're healthy, they're well fed. And so if those are the things that you look for, you can come down here and do quite well without stopping to go to Mars. Yeah. Right. And so the purpose of the article that I wrote was really just to kind of debunk some of the myths that are out there and to let people know that it's a safe country, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's a nice place to cruise, the waters are, are wonderful, and that, uh, you know, it's not the end of the earth, it's only 90 miles from my end. Cuba is 600 miles long, you know, there's, a, there's right. thousands of miles of coastline. And there's something for every taste, you know, from the uh, you know the urban hustle and bustle of Havana with the music, the cars, the the, the, the restaurants. I mean, you can go to some five-star restaurants here and be prepared to pay for it, or you can go out into into the Cayos, where you can have an anchorage to yourself and you know run around playing Robinson Crusoe, you know, make it on the beach if you wish, and there's not a soul to bother you. Mm. So, you know, the, uh, what's the favorite spot? And I guess it all depends on the mood of the day. Over the last few years, the, the Cubans have worked very hard at streamlining the, uh, the whole entry process. I mean, the first time Pat and I came into Cuba, we, <laughs> I mean, we had an entourage waiting for us on the dock. It was, there were at least seven. All there were seven. In crisp different uniforms, you know, representing all the different ministries from customs to Guarda Frontera to agriculture to veterinary services to health. I mean, it was it was totally wild. The table that we're sitting around now was full of people. It, it was just all this noise and paper. It was, it, there must have been a hundred sheets of paper on the table that first time we came in. Today, you come into Cuba. You almost feel left out because only two guys come on board, and sometimes only one. They have two forms. You fill them out. You give them your passport. Fifty-five dollars later, it's all done. Do you think that there's any big changes coming to Cuba with the embargo being lifted? Well, there will be some changes. The, uh, the embargo being lifted by itself is a big change. Yes. And the, uh, you know. The changes are already happening with or without the embargo. I mean, the, the American government have relaxed the travel restrictions on their population. And just in this early stages where it's still not open for tourism, people are finding reasons to come down here. And, you know, if you look around Marina Hemingway, this used to be a small village of maybe 25 or 30 foreign boats. Everybody knew everybody else. And today, there are hundreds of boats here. They're coming and going every day. It's, uh, yeah. it, it's the personality of the marina is changing because it's so transient now as opposed to what it was. People used to come down here and spend the whole season. And if you go up and down the docks, you will find people that have been here for years. Right. And, and people from all over the world, is that correct? People from all oh, over sure. the world. A yeah. lot of foreign tourists, a lot of, a lot of uh, French boats, like German boats. The, uh, you know, they, a, a lot of these uh, European-based vessels, they come across on uh, the Ark, they come into the, uh, you know, the, the Lesser Antilles, and they make the loop through Cuba on their way to other parts of Latin America. It's just a natural progression to, mm -hmm. to circle the north side of the, uh, the Caribbean base. Mm -hmm. like we were down on the south coast last year, and I mean, for two months, uh, the we, only, spoke we spoke French. The only English conversations we had were with each other. 
<laughs> Thank you, Pat and Addison. And now a few important words from the Hemingway Dockmaster. When you come into Marina Hemingway, you, uh, you only have to come with the passport control and the bow documentation. It's very important that no coming anybody that born in Cuba in any time. It's a problem because if you come in with any Cuba, you have to leave. But you don't have any problem if you come in alone, only the people that um, is not from Cuba. Um, it's important that one or two miles before enter Marina Hemingway, you call um, by radio channel 77 or 16, and the dog master will say how you can enter at Marina. It's very easy, no more, no more. Stay tuned for part two of Sailing to Cuba. Be sure to check out this month's feature vlogger at papersailor.com. Accidental Sailor Girl is a daily vlog of living aboard a sailboat with solar and wind. Pulling out the sewing machine before work. Welcome aboard sailing vessel Norna, our daily lives of living aboard. It's supposed to blow northeast today. Riding out in the dinghy uh, was rough. From working on our boat and our Volkswagen bus to cruising and traveling. I want to do is my curtains. Getting towed. Every day there's a new adventure. Welcome aboard! Thank you for watching episode 2, part 1 of Sailing to Cuba. Please subscribe and share the link. Have a great day.